guys. Today I'm going to teach you how to make your very own bear pasties. Okay, for the first stage of pasty making, we're going to make a base or a template. Um, I'm going to be using a measuring tape, some cardboard, which is just an old oats packet, um, a pen or a pencil, um, a maths compass, but we don't have to use one of those, I'll explain in a minute, and some scissors. Alright, let's go. So the first thing you want to do is to find your nipple diameter measurement. The easiest way to do this is with a measuring tape. You can use a ruler as well. You hold up the measuring tape to the widest point of your nipple and just record the number that it is across. So let's say the one that I'm doing is one and a half inches. You want to add a half inch to that because we're going to be making a circle for the pasty base. But pasty bases, um, once they're sewn or glued, they sit over themselves a bit more so that measurement gets taken away a bit. So I'm using my maths compass. And I'm going to halve my two inches measurement and just make it one inch so that I can draw the circle to the right size. Then we're going to get our piece of cardboard, oats, and we're going to draw that circle. Make sure you record where you put the centre point of the circle because that's quite important. Perfect circle. If you don't have a maths compass or just can't be bothered with this step, you can find any old household object that is a similar size to your nipple. So it could be a coin or the bottom of a jar. This is a pretty solid similar size to that actually. And you can use that as your template. So it's as easy as just doing this. Woo! Um, that's pretty much the same, which is cool. Um, it's just a bit harder. This one's better because you know where the center is. It doesn't really matter too much. You can just approximate where you think it is. Woohoo! Close enough. So now we cut it out. Ta-da! Now we need to cut a slit down the middle. Do, 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 to right to the center. That's where the center point comes in. Yay! Then you have semi pack man. Okay, now we have our pasty template. You can use this now forever to make the pasties that are exactly your size with the slit in the perfect spot. Now you've made your template, we're going to transfer it onto a different material to use for the pasty bases. What I've got here is a fake leather, which I just got from Spotlight, Spotlight Online. Um, if you don't have anything stiff material wise, you can actually just use the template that you made. You'll need two. I know performers who have used cardboard as bases before, so that's an option. Alright, so I've got my fake leather and we're just going to do exactly what we just did for the template, except down the middle to get that slit and then around. There we go. I like, I like to put an extra dot in the center. All right, I have to do that twice now. Woohoo! Okay, cool. Now we cut those out. Okay, those are cut out now. Um, don't fret if they're not perfect circles. Uh, we'll be putting rhinestones on it so you, you can kind of fix your circles the, um, with stones. The next step is to make them 3D, I guess. So all pasties um, have a bit of a curve to them, as you might have seen. Some of them are really pointy, some of them are a little flatter. Um, I usually make them pointy-ish. Um, if you've got a flatter surface, so if you're making these for your butt, for instance, or if you've got a flatter chest, um, you probably want them to sit flatter, um, just so there's a bit more surface area for them to stick onto with a flatter surface. I like to draw like a pizza wedge here. Um, the skinnier the wedge, the flatter the um, pasty will be. So I'm gonna draw it Let's do that, about that. That's an average curve. Alright, so now I've figured out what I want on that one. I like to stick them on top of each other and kind of figure out where it is so it's pretty much exact. Like the same. Cool beans. Okay, for this next step, which is actually making it stick up like that, you can, if you really want, you can sew with a machine or hand sew down the middle. That's a pretty strong way of doing it. Um, a lot of people sew. Um, I like to use fabric glue. I use this one that's pretty strong. If you're using glue, use it in a well-ventilated area. Alright, so I put glue all over the inside of my little pizza square. 
triangle blue and just fold it onto itself like that. Um, the glue that I'm using is pretty quick drying so I can just kind of hold it and it will dry but if you are using a, um, a thicker glue or a slower to dry glue you can do this step and then get yourself something like a peg and then peg it or just leave it drying somewhere or we'll just do it with the other one. Okay, now we've got our pasty bases. The next step is covering them in fabric. Now I like to do this just so that underneath the rhinestones it has like a nice um, colour to it. It matches. Um, it also covers that seam that you made. You can use any fabric to cover pasty bases. Stretchier is easier. Um, if you don't have fabric of any kind lying around, you can just colour in these bases to be whatever colour you want. Um, textures or paint if you really want. Um, textures sometimes run when you put glue on them, just a warning. So we get our fabric, I'm just going to halve it so that it just doesn't matter, just chop it roughly. There's two squares that will cover each base. Some people for this step sew the fabric on around the edge, hand sewing. Else you can use glue. I use my super fast drying fabric glue. And then I'll get my fabric and I usually just lay it and then just pull it a bit so that it doesn't have creases in. Yeah, it's pretty much dry already. Cool, nice. All right, um, yeah, I'm gonna leave those just for a little bit. Once these are dry, we cut out the excess fabric from the edges. Voila, there's one. See what I mean by it? You can still kind of see where that seam is, but it's a lot less obvious. All right. So the next step is putting swivels in your pasties. If you're going to be making tasseled pasties, swivels just help the, um, tassel spin. These ones are from eBay. If you just eBay search fishing swivels, she'll find you some that are like this. Um, some little o-rings I'm using, some cutting pliers, and some scissors again. Okay, so these are our fishing swivels. One side moves and the other side is still. You can tell because there's a ridge between, see how this one spins, and the other side doesn't have that little ridge there. So the first step for this is to cut this o-ring off. Now I'm going to use my pliery boys. And then I usually use my scissors to pry them open. Easy. Cool. And now that side is free of its o-ring so we can thread it through the pasty base easier. Leave this one on because it acts as a bit of an anchor on the base. Okay once you've done that for both swivels then we're going to thread them into our pasty bases. Now the best way to start doing this is with something pointy like these really fine tipped scissors or a scalpel or whatever um, and we just make a little hole at the top of the cone just to help the swivel go through. There's the hole, here's my swivel, and you get the pointy bit that you cut the o-ring off and you just give it a bit of help, push it through until it sits approximately like that. There! And I've already done this one because I was a rebel. Okay, next step is to reattach the rings onto your pasty bases once you've threaded them through. Uh, you can use the uh, rings that you cut off if you've kept them in pretty good condition and just re-thread them. Else you can get these online. They're jewellery links or jewellery rings. Um, yeah, so you grab one. These ones are pretty soft metal so you can kind of just split it with your hands so that it will thread easy. Find the hole, thread it through, and then the easiest way to close it again is with 
have these needle nose pliers. You can use these pliers if you really want. It just won't sit as nicely. So you can just close it again with these. Cool. And there's your ring. I'll do it to the other one. Now one last step that I like to do just to really anchor these in place is I like to put a dab of glue. Usually I'll use like quite a strong super glue, but just for today I'm going to be using this fabric glue because it dries fast and you just plonk a little bit in there. Here's a super close up of how snugly the swivel sits in there and the glue that's on it drying. Um, here's about how high up that swivel sits from the fabric. And here's the little o-ring. This is the fun part! Decorating! Alright, I have a pretty simple setup here. Um, I use these crystal trays to put stones in. Uh, if you don't have these, you can use the lid. Just anything you can put them in and they won't go everywhere and you can pour them out back into bags easier. This is Fabrifuse, this is what I use to glue stones on. If you don't have it, you can use any kind of like PVA craft glue. This is really good for fabric though, I recommend this. Um, this is a crystal picker upper. I don't need that yet. Um, cool. Okay. Now I like to start from the outside and work my way in. Everyone's different. Um, I get my stones from all over the place. eBay, uh, AliExpress, uh, these ones are glass, and these ones are acrylic. I usually use a mix. Um, from a distance you can't really tell, and even close up sometimes you can't really tell. It depends on the quality of the acrylics. Some are really good. Uh, these ones are pretty good. I'm just going to alternate these um, around the edge. It's going to look a bit like this, I reckon. Let's see what happens. More is always better in glue, especially for the edge stones, because they like to, they can get dislodged a lot easier. There's that edge. Um, to like make sure that you're sticking to a circle and aren't, some aren't going way further out than others. Sometimes depending on how strong your glue is you can turn it over and just see if some look like they're sticking out further than others. And once you've done the edge, um, I'd leave it totally to dry on something that's a bit raised so I'm just using this container. Okay, now these are mostly dry. Start adding further in. Now I'm going to use black stones. I use three different sizes of the same black stones. So I'm going to go in between some of the nice pattern that's been made here already just by the edges of the stones and just kind of follow that but with black. To pick up stones I use one of these. It's a crystal picker um, but it doesn't. you don't have to use one of these. It's just basically a wax ended pencil. I often just use a crayon, old school. Um, it's similar. It just needs to be sticky. There you go. I think I'll do the whole edge like that. Okay, that's the whole edge done. And now we'll do the same thing on the other one. Okay, second layer done. And I often like to just alternate colours, so I'll then go gold for the next line. My next step is to see what will fit in the next gap. So what will fit nicely in around this shape I've made will be something like these little. Um, these get called horse eye shape or navette, I think is what it's called online if you're looking for this shape stone that I'm holding. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to put one of those in each gap. Once again, same with the outside stones, you just check that they're all kind of evenly spaced. Cool, that's that layer. So in between those horse eye shaped stones, I'm going to put some of these teardrop stones. 
When it comes to doing stones close to the swivel attachment, I like to just move it as I go. Some people will put a skewer through it so that it stays upright. Um, sometimes I just don't put these on until a later stage. Um, although for this time I'm just going to move them aside. So once I've placed a stone down, I'm just going to move it across and let it sit on top. Here it is, close up. Now we do that same thing on the other one. Cool. The next thing I do is go through and see what areas kind of need more stones. Um, there's quite a few gaps on these, which you can't tell from a distance. Like you could happily leave those like that. Um, but I just like to go ham. Uh, so I reckon at the point where the black stops, I'm going to put black stones on top of the gold stones. I like a bit of stone on stone. <laughs> just kind of continues the zigzaggy shape a bit. Now another thing I've noticed is that the gaps here, like at the top of these square gold, uh, there's quite a bit of fabric showing through so I might put some small gold stones in between which I've got here. Here are the extra added little gold stones that I've put in which are there, yeah, and the blacks. Cool, they'll do all of that on the stuff. Alright, I think we need this size for the center ring of black. Once again, I like to do about half of the stones and then just move the swivel attachment so it's sitting on top of the stones you've just placed and not in the glue. Okay, so while we wait for these to dry a bit more, I'm just going to get some tassels and put some stones on those. These ones are, I think from AliExpress. I like ones with long um, attachments just so that there's a bit more to play with. Usually I try to do a similar pattern and colour scheme to what I've done over here. That's why these are gold, so I'm going to use black stones. And I might do some zigzagging, which is a bit similar to how I've done the black on these. All right. Cool. So I've just kind of done a alternating pattern. Now when you're waiting for these to dry, if you have something to hook them on, that's great. Uh, otherwise, you can kind of just leave them on the edge of a bench or something. Cool. Cool beans. Done. All right. I'll leave that one to dry with it. Okay, once everything is dry or relatively dry, you can just, I like to shorten these. And to do that, I um, just tie a few knots in. It leaves this quite a chunky knot collection going on here. So um, I usually use these big hole beads. I think online, the glass big hole, large hole, something like that beads. Um, and then you just thread it through and sit it where the knots are. You can use smaller beads if you like. Um, I just like the big ones because they cover the knots nicely. Uh, it's all personal choice. All good. Um, I'll do the same over here. Okay, and the last step is to thread your tassels onto your loops that we put on here earlier. Threading it through and flipping the tassel through itself. Like so. And with that, you've finished your pair of pasties! Yay! Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, happy twirling. <laughs>